What's up everyone, it's Mark from Silence Tech. Sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. Over the past month or so I've had a really bad chest and on the plus side it's completely forced me to quit vaping for good now so I'll feel a lot better. But sadly you won't be seeing any more smoke in my b-roll from now on. Regardless it's great to be finally working on another upload and I've decided to make this video all about my best mods that you can do to really improve a stock mouse in this handy step by step guide. From a simple custom power cord installation to going all out with spray paint I'll show the different fixes for the dreaded button wobble creaking and flexing reported by buyers on the current wave of ultra lightweight mice such as the MM710 and Model O. Plus I'll showcase my ultimate modded gaming mouse for 2020 a little later on. First up let's get into some basic mods you can easily do yourself. Custom cables can seriously change how a mouse feels and a good power cord will make any mouse feel wireless and you'll be amazed how much drag a stock cable can cause. In the US a great place to pick up a power cord for your mouse is either a website called Paraflex or Spectrum Designs. In the EU personally I get all mine from Power Cable Mods, links will be in the description. I'm currently installing a power cord on my G-Wolves Hattie, personally I always try to just leave the wires exposed inside making it much easier to manage when putting the mouse back together. I love to run the cables underneath the main PCB as well, overall it's pretty straightforward and if you'd like to see a full installation guide or a tutorial on any other mod in this video please let me know in the comments section down below. One issue I've had with a lot of custom power cords is sometimes they seem to fall underneath my mouse after a big swipe. Because I game at such a low sensitivity, 80cm for a full 360 degree turn. I found a great solution for this, I know there's the well known zip tie mod, but personally I believe this mod is better, although it is a little risky. I simply push a sewing needle inside where the cable exits the mouse and this helps keep the cable straight, it minimises drag and stops it falling underneath as much. I nearly gave up on power cords altogether completely at one point and this mod really helped me. Moving on to button wobble, it has been a big issue in pretty much all of the ultra lightweight mice that were released in 2019. But don't worry I will show you exactly how to fix or at least improve the problem. The best solution I have come up with involves using metal tape and applying it in layers to each side where the stabs push down, that's what I call them, in between between the main shell to the Omron switches. This method works extremely well and I have absolutely zero button wobble on my Model O or Model O minus now. This also works great for the MM710, Hattie and of course the Cape Town. I would recommend applying at least four layers of tape on each side and then reattach all the parts to see if there's any improvement. And I also found using zip ties on the MM710 in the area shown really helped to reduce any sway on both clicks. Another fix I made for the MM710 was underneath. The mouse scratches a lot, causing inconsistent aiming. One problem was the skates, they don't have tapered edges. In fact, there was a lot of sharp edges underneath, especially around the recessed sticker. I sanded down the whole bottom plate using a sanding block and 1500 grit wet and dry sandpaper. Then I went ahead and applied some Z1 hyperglides to my MM710, which were originally designed for the FK2. The improvement this made made compared to stock was incredible. This was all personal preference but there's absolutely no reason why you can't rock your favourite skates on any mouse using this method or mod. I have completely flattened out also the bottom plate on my Hattie and I can't wait to test out how a set of Z1 skates feels on that mouse. Next if you want to go all out you've come to the right place. My Cape Town after a while had a lot of creaking and flexing and it started to drive me nuts. Plus I know a lot of people have complained about flexing on the Modelo and Modelo Minus as well, especially around the sides because of the RGB strips. A great way to fix this is to pick up some Gorilla Glue, damn this stuff is strong so go careful and try to work out where the creaking is coming from or the flexing and apply a thin layer of glue inside. I found this worked really well on my Modelo Minus by gluing the areas inside where the RGB strips are. Now the side walls feel a lot more solid and robust before there was quite a bit of flex. You may have noticed I have a completely different top section on my Model O. This came from a company called Swift Shell. 
models. They sent out various colours and overall the quality is okay. The actual shell fits well and my left and right clicks operate just fine, but I had to sand the shell because overall the quality well, it did look pretty bad. But mind you, after 10 minutes of going crazy with some wet and dry, the finish looks perfect, but honestly I wasn't happy with the quality straight out of the box. Other cool mods that you can do involve swapping out the scroll wheel using silicone rings. You need to get the right size on Amazon, which can be a pain. For the MM711 and Modlo Minus, I use these in a size 9. A link will be in the description. For the MM711, however, the silicone ring was too wide to fit inside, so I had to use 120 grit wet and dry sandpaper to reduce the overall width, allowing the rubber band to fit correctly. I tried some spray painting recently, and here's my cut. Custom G Wolf's Hattie. I went for a neon purple and gloss finish and I also sprayed the bottom part white. Overall it actually looks pretty professional but with my bad chest I'm probably going to give spray painting a bit of a miss at least for a while. Moving away from ultra lightweight mice for a second, you can make any mouse much lighter. Check out my modded Zowie FK2, it currently weighs 72 grams down from 84. I drilled holes underneath and on the inside and I completely removed the right side buttons and PCB, then used some lizard skin to cover up the hole that was left. I swapped out the original rubber cable with a custom power cord and of course I finished off with a set of custom Z1 skates from Hyperglass. So what's my favourite modded mouse in 2020? It has to be my custom glossy G Pro Wireless. It took a while for me to narrow down exactly what I didn't like about a G Pro Wireless in stock form. First it was the matte plastic coating. You may have seen my glossy tutorial video where I changed the matte coating. Judging on the views there's also a lot of you out there that hated the stock coating as well. But even with the glossy mod, I felt there was still something missing. Sure, the grip was way better now for my dry hands, but underneath I always felt the mouse just didn't quite glide good enough. And I always loved Hyperglide Z1 skates as mentioned earlier, but I couldn't install them underneath due to the massive hole where the power play puck normally goes. Long story short, I super glued the stock power plate cover permanently inside and then sanded the whole bottom plate completely flush. Man, honestly, the glide became so smooth, plus I reduced the weight down to 65 grams and I finally have my ultimate gaming mouse. Rounding off, if you're ever going to take gaming seriously on PC, I feel customising your mouse to suit your needs is extremely important. It's unlikely you will ever find a mouse in stock form that will be perfect for you or that couldn't be improved in some way or another. If you own a stock mouse that's nearly perfect for you in every way, you're lucky. Personally, it took me years, and only then by modding a stock mouse heavily did I find my ideal setup. I learnt what I prefer all by modding, and the end result was greatly improved accuracy in FPS shooters. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this guide, and it may or may not have helped you in some small way. My name's Mark from Silence Tech, and it's great to be back. Goodbye.